Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take the same code that we had before and we're going to introduce a more multi-threaded approach to it. Now, I know multi-threaded code may seem a little intimidating for beginners, but like the Marauder from Doom Eternal, the most challenging aspect can sometimes become the most enjoyable aspect once we understand it and have a bit of experience. So, here's the theory. Like I was saying before, we have a series of stages in our process. First thing we want to do is acquire an image, and then we want to render, and then we want to present that image on the screen. Now, these processes are throwing off work to the GPU. So they can actually execute a lot faster than the GPU can do that work in order to do that. And this is really sort of rehashing previous videos, but why not? In order to do that, we have a semaphore which sits between them. This acquire image will signal this semaphore when it's done. And this render operation will wait on that semaphore to proceed. Okay. And then blocking everything off is a fence. And that fence is reset, is signaled, sorry, it's, it's closed, it's closed when the function begins. So when the, when we start this function, we sort of, we reset the fence, we sort of close it so that if this function executes really quickly and the game does its thing, then in the next iteration, when it comes through, it's waiting until this render is complete. And then that fence is open again and the function can proceed. So this is what we can call in flight. In other words, work is currently being done and this frame cannot be worked on. Now, technically in the present section, we're in flight as well, but because we're using mailbox presentation, if a frame is not actively being presented, we can re-render it. That's okay. So this is all well and good. This is what we did in the previous video. You may notice there's an issue. And the issue is, like I said, if the CPU goes incredibly fast, it will go through these function calls and then do its thing and come back. And it might come back while work is still being done because there's no sort of semaphore here that's, you know what I mean? So the issue is this causes a CPU block because it's waiting, it's physically waiting to do things. So, hence the multi-threaded approach. So here's the multi-threaded approach. Very good drawing. Okay, so we come along and we um, have rendered frame one. So let's say we have frame one, two, etc. We've rendered frame one. So right now we are on frame number two. Now let's say we go really fast and this fence is still blocked. Well, guess what? Fence two might be open and that lets us go through without a CPU block. Now, of course, this process of acquiring, rendering and presenting still needs to be synchronized and we can't rely on whatever previous frames are doing. So every frame is going to need its own set of semaphores. So um, all we need to do here is say, okay, um, a frame will have a bunch of things and it will have yeah, a fence and two semaphores, and these will be used in synchronization. Anyway, enough talking, let's get to the code. Okay, so just to take stock of where we are at the moment, this is our situation. We have our triangle, our frame rate is about, oh geez, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> our frame rate is about, uh, yeah, 4,5400. Let's say, yeah, about 5,5400, something like that. Okay. That's looking good. Now, 
just a side note, we can put this in release mode, but we just need to make sure, I've been caught out by this a number of times, we just need to make sure sometimes when we change the mode, the settings change. Oh, okay, I've set this up ahead of time. Okay, so earlier I had debug mode on C17 and release mode on C14, and that was causing issues. But currently we can put it in release mode. And there we are, about. Yeah, it's pretty good. Performance is pretty good. So, how do we make this multi-threaded? Again, results may vary because I was not getting performance that good earlier. Anyway, so like I said, we're going to take our frame and our frame structure is going to have those synchronization objects in it. So we have all of this stuff. That's all good. So actually sort of taking exactly the same stuff as we had before and just <laughs> getting rid of it, shifting it out to the frames. So um, now we'll go to the engine and down here we have the synchronization objects. We don't need these. Instead of this, I'm gonna define two variables. I'm going to define the maximum number of frames that we can be working on in any given time and the current frame number. We can then go to the code and yeah, we'll fix this up. Now up here we make the device and this is the first point at which we get an idea for how many images we're actually gonna have. So we can set this, we can go max frames of flight is get the size and this is going to complain it should complain at least that we've got a size t and we need to put that into an integer so we'll just cast that oh not size t that's what we're getting we're putting that into an integer so size t if you're unfamiliar with this it's basically a 64-bit unsigned um, integer we want to put that into a regular signed integer why not why not? Okay, so we've got that. And then we're gonna define the current frame number is zero. Okay, then we'll go down to finalize setup. And this is where we're creating our synchronization structures. So let's loop through, we'll go for Just looping through there. Now, this is sort of how we'd want to do it, but there's a subtlety here. Because we're simply taking an element of this and it's a simple element, this is not a deep copy. So if we modify anything in this frame, it will not be reflected. All we need to do is take a reference to that and then we can treat it like a regular variable and do things normally. So we'll go frame and that was in flight. Okay. And we'll just go through this so frame image available and frame render finished. Awesome. Okay. Now we'll also need to go down to the cleanup function and make sure we're destroying these. So if we go to the cleanup, see that we're Oh, down here. See that we're sort of destroying this stuff. Here we can put this in. Yeah. And it's okay to have a shallow copy here because these objects are being passed around. They're basically 60, they're Vulkan handles. So everything in Vulkan is a 64 bit integer of some kind. And that's all that we're passing into the destroy function, just a 64-bit integer, one, two, three, four, that's fine. Now, on the other hand, previously we would want to actually save those. So we don't want to save it to a shallow copy, we don't want to save it to a deep copy. I'm just saying this because this error was very annoying when it came up for me. Okay, so 
Now onto the drawing. So we've created the synchronization structures. Now, what do we want to do? The fence that we are going to wait on will go stop chain frames for the current frame number. And we want to wait on that in flight fence there. Okay, so if we run this and frame number is set to one, then we're looking at frame one's in-flight fence. Then we'll close frame one's in-flight fence behind us. And then down here, when we render, we want to reset frame one's in-flight fence, if that makes sense. And then up here, where are we? We want to get the current frames image available semaphore and signal that when we're done. And then where are we? We want to, it's, it's just a, an exercise in refactoring. Essentially, we're going to have a whole bunch of synchronization structures for each individual frame. And also, where was I? This command buffer will be, let's go keep everything tied up together to that frame number, which actually solves an issue from previous video. So I was saying, hey, um, we were getting an image index, but this function might return early or something. We might not have an image index, which actually corresponds to the image that we're drawing, if that makes sense. But here, this frame number is manually controlled by us, and this sort of locks everything up a lot better. So we do our thing, we present that, and then right at the end, we increment our frame number. Keeping within, you know, within bounds. Okay, so I think before we were getting about 5,500, something like that. Let's go back to debug. And like I said, results really vary depending on systems and everything. But uh, there's some improvement. I want to feel like there's some improvement. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there we have it. And just out of curiosity, let's run this in release mode and see what that does. I mean, at the end of the day, 5,000 frames per second is pretty good, no matter which drawing method we use. We can't be stressing too much about a triangle, but here we go. It's, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope this is helping you to become more confident working in Vulkan. I know that multi-threaded code can be intimidating, but anyway, all the best, and I will see you again soon. Bye.